Hello all, I am Siddharth Kaul and I welcome you to Edupedia World. This is a part 2 video of Linear Algebra in MATLAB. In the previous video, we covered the highlighted topics. We created matrices using functions such as Pascal and Magic. We saw the conditions that are required to be met to perform operation of addition and subtraction. We also saw the transpose inner product, dot product and outer product of vectors. We saw how matrix multiplication happen and what does asterisk operator does in matrix multiplication. We saw what is identity matrix and how it is created in MATLAB using the function i that is EYE. I also summarized some properties of matrix namely properties of addition, multiplication and transpose just for sake of knowledge. Now moving on. Kronecker tensor product. The Kronecker product that is cron of x of y of two matrices is the larger matrix formed from all the possible products of elements of x with those of y. So if x is an m by n matrix and y is a p by q matrix then cron of x y is m p by n q matrix. The elements are arranged in the following order. The first element of x is multiplied by y then the second element of matrix x is multiplied by y and so on till x 1 of n is multiplied by y. Similarly, xm of 1 multiplied by y till xmn of y. So in simple terms, Kronecker tensor product of x and y is that, that each element of x gets multiplied to y as a scalar and the resultant matrix is formed. The Kronecker product is often used with matrices of zeros and ones to build up repeated copies of small matrices. For example, x is a 2 by 2 matrix of 1, 2, 3, 4. i is an identity matrix of 2 by 2. So cron of xi gives us matrix on the left that is 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3, 0, 4, 0, 0, 3, 0, 4. Whereas cron of i of x gives us a matrix of this sort that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So as you can see that certain patterns are repeated in the cron product. The vector norm. The p norm of vector x is defined by the formula shown that is norm of x p is sum of x i to the power p whole to the power 1 by p. This is computed by function norm x of p. The most common values for p are 1, 2 and infinity. Though p can have other values as well but these are the common values that are used. The default value of p for the function norm is 2 which corresponds to the Euclidean length. The example for the same has been shown on the right. We define a vector v with elements 1, 2, 3. I have first find the norm with p equal to 1 so I pass norm v comma 1 and I get an answer as 6. Similarly with p equal to 2 that is the default value I type norm of v for which I get an answer 3.7417. For p equal to infinity I write norm v comma infinity and I get the answer as 3. So this example shows how to compute vector norm with three most common values of p. The matrix norm. The p norm of a matrix is defined as shown in the equation on the screen. So p norm of a is equal to max p norm of ax divided by p norm of x. Again this can be computed using the function norm by passing arguments a and p. So this is com basic again this is computed basically for p equal to 1, 2 and infinity. Here also the default value of p is 2 which corresponds to the Euclidean length. The example for the same has been shown on the right. So I define a matrix A as Pascal of 3 that is a 3 by 3 matrix. So first I find the norm with p equal to 1 by writing norm A comma 1 and I get answer as 10. Similarly I find the norm with p equal to 2 that is the default value and I type norm of A. I get answer as 7.8730. Similarly I do with p equal to infinity by writing norm A comma infinity and I get answer as 10. So this example shows how to compute matrix norm with three most common values of P. 
Now, multi-threaded computation with linear algebra function. MATLAB as a software supports multi-threaded computation for a number of linear algebra element-wise numerical functions. These functions automatically execute on multiple threads, so we don't have to do anything. But for a function or expression to execute faster on multiple CPUs, a number of condition has to be met. So the first condition and the most obvious one is that the operation that the function is performing should be in a way that it can easily partition into section that can execute concurrently. Moreover, these section when executing should do so with as little as communication between among them as possible. So if a section 1 is executing and a section 2 is executing, it should execute in a way that it does not have to communicate with each other. So the ideal way, ideal communication should be none. Also, there has to be a very few sequential operation so as to reduce the wait time. Second thing is that the data size for the operation should be large enough so that any advantage of concurrent execution do outweigh the time required to create the partition for data and the time required to manage the execution of threads. For example, it makes no sense to perform parallel multiplication of a small sized array as data partition itself takes more time than to calculate it. Third thing is that the operation should not be memory bound so as to avoid processing time to be dominated by the memory access time. So as a general rule, complex functions speed up more than the simple function. The matrix multiply that is x into y and the matrix power that is x raised to p. These operators sh show significant increase in speed on large double precision arrays. Generally on order of 10,000 elements, greater than 10,000 elements. The matrix analysis function that is determined r condition has and XPAM also shows significant increase in speed on large double precision arrays. System of linear equation. One of the most important problems in technical computing is the solution of system of simultaneous linear equation. In a matrix notation, the general problem takes the following form. Given two matrices A and B, does there exist a unique matrix X so that AX equal to B or X equal to B? It is instructed to consider a one by one example. For example, say equation 5x equal to 15. Does it have a unique solution? The obvious answer is of course yes. The equation has a unique solution with x equal to 3. So if you notice that how we obtain this solution is by dividing 15 by 5. The solution is not ordinarily obtained by computing the inverse of 5 that is 5 inverse and then multiplying 5 inverse by 15. This would be more work. So if phi inverse is represented to a finite number of digits, it will also be less accurate and our answer would also be very less accurate. Similar conditions apply to sets of linear equations with more than one unknown. The MATLAB software solves such equation with, without computing the inverse of the matrix. Although it is not a standard mathematical notation, MATLAB uses the division terminology familiar in the scalar case to describe the solution of a general system of simultaneous equation. The two division symbol that is uh, slash and backslash correspond to the two MATLAB functions that are MR divide and ML divide. MR divide and ML divide are used for the two situations where the unknown matrix appear on the left or the right side of the coefficient matrix. The coefficient matrix in this case is matrix A. So x equal to B slash A denotes the solution to the matrix equation of form x a equal to b and x equal to a backslash b denotes the solution to the matrix equation of form a x equal to b. Think of dividing both sides of equation a x equal to b or x a equal to b by a. The coefficient matrix a is always in the denominator. We'll go into detail on how to use MATLAB to find solution of simultaneous linear equation. So if you're not understanding do not worry, all doubts will be clear when I make a video on using MATLAB to solve system of linear equation. So for now, on this slide I am presenting a dumbed down gist on what is the general form of system of linear equation. So we have a set of three sets of equation like a11x1 plus a12x2 plus a13x3 equal to b1. Similarly a21x1 plus a22x2 
plus a two three x three equal to b two, a three one x one plus a three two x two plus a three three x three equal to b three. So the all the notation with a letter are the coefficient. All the notation with x letter are the variables, and all the notation with b are constants. So in matrix form, we write it as a x equal to b. So the solution can be obtained by multiplying a inverse on the both the side. As we know the property that a inverse into a is called to identity matrix, so we get x equal to a inverse of b. Now obviously a is a one one, a one two, a one three, and so on. B is a column vector with elements b one, b two, and b three, and x is also a column vector of elements x one, x two, and x three. Point to note that here in case the a is a square matrix, so inverse is possible. ML divide and MR divide. ML divide a comma b. ML divide of a b is equivalent of a backslash b that performs the matrix left division. A and b must be matrices that have the same number of rows, unless a is a scalar, in which case a backslash b performs element wise division. That is, a backslash b is equivalent to a dot backslash b. MR divide of B A is equivalent of B slash A that performs matrix right division. B and A must have the same number of columns. The specified algorithm used for solving the simultaneous linear equations denoted by x equal to A forward slash B and x equal to B back slash A depends upon the structure of the coefficient matrix A. To determine the structure of A and select appropriate algorithm, MATLAB uses certain precedence values. I will discuss these rules in the coming videos. For multi-threaded computation with system of linear equation, the condition to be met for faster execution on multiple CPU is exactly as same as that of linear algebra function. These conditions are like the common base grounds or the common condition that needs to be met to perform any. Kind of concurrent operations, but for sake of sequence, I am going to repeat these conditions. So, for the first condition and the most obvious one is that the operation that the function is performing should be in a way that it can easily be partitioned into section that can execute concurrently. Moreover, these section when executing should do so with as little communication among them as possible. The ideal communication should be none. They should also have very few sequential operations so as to reduce the wait time. Second thing is that the data size for the operation should be large enough so that the advantage of concurrent execution does outweigh the time required to create the partition for data and time required to manage the execution of threads. For example, it makes no sense to perform parallel multiplication of small sized array as data partition itself takes more time than to calculate it. Third thing is that operation should not be memory bound, as to avoid processing time to be dominated by memory excess time. So functions like inverse, LS convert, linear solve, and ML divide show significant increase in speed on large double precision arrays. That is order of more than ten thousand elements or more. Iterative methods for solving system of linear equation. If the coefficient matrix A is large and sparse. Factorization methods are generally not efficient. Iterative methods generate a series of approximated solutions. So there are several methods that can handle such large matrices. We have a PCG that is the precondition conjugate gradient method. This method is appropriate for Hermitian positive definite coefficient matrix A. We have BICG that is bi conjugate gradient method. We have BICG S T A B that is bi conjugate gradient stabilized method. We have conjugate gradient squared method. We have generalized minimum residual method, and we have the famous L S Q R method. Inverse and determinants. For a square matrix in algebra, the inverse and determinant of the matrix is calculated, because it is only applicable for square matrices. Defining inverse. Mathematically. If A is a square and non-singular matrix, then A x equal to identity matrix and x equal to identity matrix. So this x is the inverse of A denoted by A inverse. And well, determined is defined as determined of matrix, so there should be no surprise there. For 
those who forgot the determinant is the one that is calculated using the cofactor n minus of matrix a for calculating the inverse of matrix we use function inverse that is inv and for calculating the determinant of matrix we use function det that is the determinant here i have shown examples where i have used determinant and inverse on a square matrix so on the left side we see a symmetric matrix a is equal to pascal of 3 that is a 3 by 3 matrix we find the determinant using writing determinant of a passing a as a matrix and we get answer as 1 similarly we find the inverse by passing a as an input argument and we get answer as 3 minus 3 1 and so on similarly on the right side i create a non symmetric matrix that is b using function magic with input argument as 3 so it's a 3 by 3 non symmetric matrix determinant for the same is again found out by passing matrix b as an input argument to function determinant and i get an answer as minus 360 similarly inverse is calculated by passing argument b to the function inverse pseudo inverse as we know that inverse and determinants are applicable only to square matrix so what about the rectangular matrix well technically they do not have inverse or determinants at least cause uh, that is because at least one of the equation that is ax equal to y and x a equal to y does not have a solution for a rectangular matrix a partial replacement for the inverse is provided by moore penrose pseudo inverse which is computed by p inverse function so on the left we have defined a 2 by 3 matrix c with values as 1 to 3 and 1 to 3 and on the right i have did a pseudo inverse of that same matrix c and i get an answer as such this concludes the part 2 of this video coming up next i am going to introduce factorization and we are going to see koleski factorization lu factorization and qr factorization so till then stay tuned please subscribe and thanks for watching